This is breaking news from RTV6, working for you. In the race for the White House, the Democratic presidential field getting more narrow. Today, billionaire Mike Bloomberg announced he was dropping out of the race after a disappointing Super Tuesday. The former New York City mayor says he's endorsing former Vice President Joe Biden. Also, Senator Elizabeth Warren's campaign manager says she is currently reassessing her run for the presidency after she also did not fare well in Tuesday's primary. We'll have much more on this developing story and more Super Tuesday analysis coming up in just moments on the news app. At noon. But first, we do need to check in on your Wednesday weather. Meteorologist Kyle Mount standing by. Kyle, we're seeing some sunshine out there today. Yeah, Meredith, we started off with a nice sunrise and the clouds moved in. A few of us even saw some showers out there, but the sunshine is returning. And check out these temperatures already into the middle 50s in Indianapolis, Martinsville, and Bloomington. A little cooler for you in the Kokomo area at 45 degrees. We've got a cold front that's sliding through the area, and that was responsible for a couple of those showers. It's also starting to turn our winds. You can see the clearing that's taking shape as well. But now we're getting those winds out of the west and northwest direction. Pretty breezy too in Indianapolis at 21 mile per hour wind, 25 miles per hour in Columbus. So because those winds are no longer out of the southwest, I don't think we're going to warm a whole lot more here as we go through the afternoon. Maybe a degree or two will continue to thin out those clouds by three o'clock. Still breezy though, 55 there. We'll see those numbers in the lower 50s as as we get to five o'clock. Coming up, we'll talk about some small precipitation chances, a brief cool down, and we're inching our way closer to the weekend forecast. Kyle, thank you. Traffic is moving again now on the northeast side, but it was slow going for a while on I-69. A total of 10 vehicles were involved in two separate crashes on southbound 69 near East 82nd Street. The crashes happened just before nine this morning. No word on what caused them, but police tell us most of the vehicles were able to drive away from the scene and no one was hurt. In Johnson County, a man is in the hospital after investigators say he tried to beat a train to a crossing while driving a box truck. The Johnson County Sheriff's Office says the man was driving on County Road 650 South, just east of US 31 in Edinburgh. Around 8.30 this morning, deputies say the man ran a stop sign while trying to make it past the crossing before the train arrived. Only he did not make it and the train hit the back of the box truck. The condition of the truck's driver was not released. No one on the train was injured. The race for the White House now in the field is thinning. As we told you moments ago, former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg is now out of the Democratic race. As ABC's Serena Marshall tells us, it came a day after Joe Biden had a Super Tuesday surge. Super Tuesday giving Joe Biden a super sweep of Southern states and one less rival. They don't call Super Tuesday for nothing. Late this morning, Michael Bloomberg announcing he's suspending his campaign and endorsing the former vice president. Biden capturing nine of the 15 contests and gaining at least 250 delegates thanks to surprise wins in Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Texas, where strong support from black voters helped him edge out Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. And we're told well when he got to Super Tuesday, it'd be over. So I'm here to report, we are very much alive. <laughs> While Biden claimed the majority of states last night, it comes down to delegates, and California has a whopping 415, the most of any contest. Still to be called, even as Senator Bernie Sanders holds a commanding lead, propelled by large margins of the Hispanic vote. And capturing Utah, Colorado, and his home state, Vermont. Tonight, I tell you with absolute confidence, we are gonna win the Democratic nomination. Elizabeth Warren coming in third in her home state. This morning, the senator's staff says she's talking to her team about the path forward. By the end of March, nearly two thirds of the delegates will have been decided. But March 15th, there is another debate and that could change the landscape once again. One thing, however, is very clear. The voters making their voices heard in Virginia, record turnout, nearly doubling the number of ballots cast compared to 2016's primary race. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. A lot more clarity in the race to see who will face President Trump this fall in the last few days also means there's a chance that Indiana's primary coming up in May could have an impact for a change. Dr. Laura Wilson is a political scientist at the University of Indianapolis here to talk all about it. Thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. So just hours ago, we learned Bloomberg is out. What do you think of that? Well, that's really surprising because usually the reason candidates get out of the race is because they don't have a lot of money 
money. Right. He, of course, seems to have infinite funds. Uh, last night, we had 14 states up for grabs and one American territory. He was only able to get the delegates from American Samoa. So he didn't do very well. Um, but apparently, he's decided to put his resources elsewhere, and he will not be running for president anymore. And we just heard that Elizabeth Warren may be considering, re she's reassessing her campaign right now. But I think we all know that might mean she is going to consider dropping out. When do you think she might make that decision if she does? Sure. Well, last night was very hard for her. She came in third in her home state of Massachusetts. She didn't win the state in which she was born in terms of Oklahoma. Um, she'd been struggling this entire time in terms of getting delegates. And, and of course, going back to money, she doesn't have infinite sums of money. So her supporters are lagging. Her funds are lagging. I imagine we'll hear sooner rather than later that she may be suspending her presidential campaign as well. Okay. And I think it's going to be now neck and neck between Biden and Bernie Sanders. What are your thoughts on that? And how long do you think it's going to switch back and forth between the two of them? Sure. Well, we're still looking to see those 415 delegates from California, how they spread out. Um, but it does seem to be a real clear two-person race. And this is fascinating because Biden represents that moderate block of the Democratic Party, whereas Sanders is much more of the liberal and progressive wing. It's quite often, it's quite likely, certainly in May, that we could have a race just between those two. They need to have 1,991 delegates in order to win. If neither candidate's able to get that mark, then we should be looking forward to a contested convention. Okay, and so by the time we get to our voting here yes. in May, what do you think things will be like? And will Indiana play a major role in whether or not it is Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders? We absolutely could play that role. And we don't expect to see more candidates enter the race at this point. Only a few will be on the ballot. But as we see Sanders um, still fairly successful, Biden obviously had a great night for Super Tuesday. Those are two candidates that are leading in terms of that delegate count. And uh, coming into May, they may still need to see Hoosiers vote in order to determine who's going to win. All right, Dr. Laura Wilson, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I'm sure we'll see you again here during this election season. Cleanup is going to take a long time. Next, an update from Middle Tennessee, where it will take a while to assess the damage from Thursday, Tuesday's deadly tornadoes. And not only do you learn about the great songs, you also learn how to sing them. Coming up, the deadline is approaching. If you're a young singer and you would like to have a chance to learn from the stars, Kyle. We are early in the month of March, but it seems like we've turned to that temperature corner. We've had some mild days. Looks like we're going to change that just a little bit here. You can see some of that cooler air filtering in from the north. I'll let you know how that could impact your weekend ahead. You're watching RTV6 News at Noon. General Hospital, this week on ABC. The slow process of cleaning up from the devastation of Tuesday's tornadoes in Middle Tennessee is underway. Those storms left at least 24 people dead in and around Nashville. The National Weather Service says that's the most fatalities from a tornado outbreak anywhere in the U.S. in at least seven years. Rescuers continue going door to door looking for those who are still unaccounted for. East Nashville rest. rest residents had only six minutes to take cover after sirens sounded. People who lived west of Nashville had even less time. It felt like a big rush of air pulling us up. And everything uh, just started going away. Rain started pelting us, kids screaming. Tens of thousands of people in Tennessee could be without power until at least next week. His case was the subject of a hugely popular HBO series. Now he's going to trial for murder. Coming up, the latest on that, from that case from Court TV. This is a live look here from the IMS Pagoda. The sun is shining over the Circle City on this Wednesday afternoon. Meteorologist Kyle Mounts will let us know whether or not that sun's going to stick around. You're watching the news at noon on RTV6. Keller. Keller and Keller. This is RTV6 News at Noon, working for you. I'm Ted Rollins. Today on Court TV, opening statements begin in the Robert Durst murder trial. Durst is accused of killing his friend and confidant Susan Berman back in the year 2000. Prosecutors say the motive was to silence Berman, who could incriminate Durst for the murder of his first wife. After his arrest in 2015, Durst talked to investigators about Berman's death. I'm just saying, that did not happen. You agree, you did not just find Susan's body and somebody else killed her. I did not find Susan's body. 
Durst, who's now 76, was found not guilty in 2003 of killing and dismembering his neighbor in Texas. He was also the subject of the HBO documentary, The Jinx. We're also in Florida for the dating app murder trial. 27-year-old Adam Hillary was shot and killed in his apartment in 2016. Andre Warner is accused of being the trigger man. Warner and three co-defendants allegedly set up the victim using the dating app Plenty of Fish. If convicted, Warner is facing a possible death sentence. We'll have coverage of both trials, plus the latest on cult mom Lori Vallow, all today on Court TV. Now back to you. You can learn more about other cases around the nation right now at CourtTV.com. Starting next week, you will be seeing mail from the United States Census Bureau as the 2020 census kicks off. Several parts of Marion County have been undercounted in the past, and when that happens, that means less federal money for the area. That's why the city of Indianapolis created Count Me Indy. It's a campaign to make sure every person is accounted for on this year's census. The campaign says the census needs to know who's in your community so they know what type of federal funding your community needs. And that goes towards broadly education, health care, transportation, emergency services. So to give you an idea of the kinds of programs that those are, that includes um, Medicare, federal Pell Grants, SNAP, WIC, different services that are going to benefit our city over the next decade. The campaign is also working to debunk myths that immigration and customs enforcement will have access to those records. Kennington says there are no questions on the census about citizenship and all census records are sealed for 72 years. You may not remember what happened exactly one year ago today, but today is a special day for Alex Trebek. It was exactly a year ago to the day that he stunned the world with the announcement he has stage four pancreatic cancer. A few hours ago, the Jeopardy host had an update for his fans as well as a lot of thank yous. But I brushed that aside quickly because that would have been a massive betrayal, a betrayal of my wife and soulmate Jean who has given her all to help me survive. It would have been a betrayal of other cancer patients who have looked to me as an inspiration and a, a cheerleader of sorts of the value of living and hope. If we take it just one day at a time with a positive attitude, anything is possible. I'll keep you posted. As Trebek pointed out, the one-year survival rate for a stage four pancreatic cancer diagnosis is only 18%. The two-year survival rate is 7%, but Trebek says his oncologist told him he is confident they will be marking a two-year anniversary this time next year. Such good news. And you've yes. got good news for us here in the weather department, Kyle. There doesn't seem to be a cloud in the sky, a change from earlier this morning. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice. We had the cloud cover, and some of us are still dealing with a little bit of that but it's going to be moving out and our biggest issue really is going to be some breezy conditions out there this afternoon. We had that yesterday too. Right now we check out the temperatures. We're in the 50s in Indianapolis and Bloomington. Cooler for you in Kokomo at 45 but there's that west to northwest breeze 15 to 20 miles per hour and we're starting to see some gusts that are getting up there around that 30 mile per hour threshold here. 32 mile per hour wind in Columbus and 28 in Indianapolis. I think these will settle down just a little bit here as we go through the evening once that cold front has slipped all the way through. But you can see those gusts will stay up there right on through the mid-afternoon hours. But by the time it's ready for the rush hour, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Just some of those gusts around 15, possibly 20 miles per hour at that point. Satellite and radar, we already see that clearing line. We saw it there on the Weather Now camera network in downtown and what showers we had quickly slipping into Ohio. We're not going to have to deal with any more rain out there this afternoon. But as mentioned, Temperatures I don't think will rise much more from where they are because that cold front has been sliding through. So upper 50s in Columbus, a couple more degrees in Indianapolis, and probably only the mid to upper 40s around Peru and Kokomo this afternoon. This evening with clear skies, those temperatures will start to slide back on a northwest breeze. We're in the upper 30s by 10 o'clock, 38 at 11. And starting off tomorrow morning, a little bit cooler than where we were this morning. We'll have some locations around Muncie toward Anderson and Peru going to be in the 20s tomorrow morning. 
morning, right around 30 in the city and 32 in Bloomington. Our Thursday forecast is going to look pretty similar in the fact that we'll kind of be in and out of the cloud cover. We'll have quite a bit of sunshine once again, and there is that breeze, but this time it will be more of a southwesterly wind, so it will help to warm us up as we head through the afternoon. After starting off around 30 degrees, we'll get into the lower 50s by 1 o'clock and middle 50s for that afternoon high. But as we get into Thursday evening, that's our next little weather system here that's going to be sliding through, bringing in some very light rain showers as we go into our Thursday evening. That slides on out of here. And then you even notice TrueCast on early Friday morning, trying to pick up a couple of snowflakes in the mix, just indicative of some of that colder air briefly returning to central Indiana. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. In fact, our chance for precip is only about 20% there on Friday. The weekend, though, looking good. We've got some sunshine there, and temperatures will be warming from a high of 50 on Saturday to around 60 degrees on Sunday. As far as widespread rain, we're going to hold that off until early next week. Ma, he's making eyes at me. Ma, he's awful nice to me. She was part of a special week of clinics where young people get to learn from the pros all about the great American songbook and about performance in general. Now she is here to talk how other young people can be part of this year's Songbook Academy. It's put on by Michael Feinstein every year in Carmel at the Center for the Performing Arts. And the deadline to apply is almost here. Olivia Broadwater was part of the Songbook Academy in 2018. You're joining us to talk all about it. Also here with us is the director of the Academy, Chris Lewis. Thank you both for joining me. Thanks Thank for, you for having us. So let's talk a little bit about the Songbook Academy. Chris, I'll ask you, what is it? And this isn't just a little song and dance <laughs> summer right. camp. Right. Well, uh, the Great American Songbook Foundation exists to uh, preserve and celebrate what we call the golden age of American popular music. So we celebrate classic Broadway, uh, music of the Gershwins, of the Porters, jazz standards. And so a big part, part of our mission is to make sure young people know about that music. Mm -hmm. The Songbook Academy is a comprehensive performance intensive um, where they get to work one-on-one -on -one with industry pros. So we bring in Grammy winners and Tony winners and top arts educators, and they get individual coaching and they get to perform on the stage at the Palladium. And then throughout the year, there are opportunities. A little like American Idol with, <laughs> with a little less pressure. Right. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your experience and what opportunities it has led to since. Yeah, well, I'm a 2018 alum and I met 39 new best friends. I still talk to them at least once a week. And I've had so many opportunities to perform. I mean, just a month ago, we went to Woodland Terrace Nursing Home and sang for people there. And just being able to share my love of music and has led me to pursue musical theater. I'm applying for schools for musical theater for college. And it's really just nurtured my passion. Okay, if any admissions offices <laughs> are watching right now, here's your girl. <laughs> so what type of kids are, is this for kids who've already had a little bit of training? Or is this just for kids who like to sing and perform in general, and what ages is this for? Sure, so it's uh, for high school students, so okay. you have to be in high school when you apply. That's really the only requirement. Um, it, it runs the gamut. There's students who've never had a voice lesson, a wow. music lesson, and then students who are, are working, um, gigging on their own. Um, you do have to have some musical ability because it is pretty intense, I would, I would mm -hmm. say. They're getting vocal health uh, instruction from, you know, world famous stars right. and you know so you've got to be able to keep up <laughs> yes uh, but there and it also runs uh, interest level too i think you know, Olivia's a Broadway uh, wannabe, right? Yes, you know, we're going to be on sure. Broadway one day. And then we have jazz singers, pop singers, singer songwriters. So it really runs the gamut. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're going to put up the information here on your screen right now. You can find out all about the Songbook Academy, where to apply. Applications do just in a few weeks. Remind me again, March? Uh, March 15th. 15th. And we do have a big announcement. Can I share something with you that no one knows? Knock your socks off. We are ready to announce today our first celebrity guest mentor and we are so excited. Scott Bradley, the creator of Postmodern Jukebox, okay. is going to be joining us for the Songbook Academy <laughs> this year. He uh, had, had turned his love of the Great American Songbook into a massive empire with Postmodern Jukebox, and we are thrilled to have him on board this summer. Fabulous. And um, we're just gonna, uh, happy to announce that today. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. If that's not incentive to come, I don't know <laughs> what is. Thank you both for joining me. We'll have that information on the IndieChannel.com, and we will be right back. For our clients. All right, breezy, mild the next couple of days with highs in the 50s and the weekend right now looking nice. Yeah, very good. Kyle, thank you and thank you for making RTV6 your choice for news. We'll see you back here at 5 o'clock. Have a great afternoon.